Hello everybody, this is Jeff Bain with Team Real and the Blues. Today I'm doing something a little different than the norm for me. I'm more known for fishing for crappie and more known for fishing for catfish. But today I'm trying to set up my new reels. I recently purchased two brand new Okuma 203D line counters. Yeah, line counters. I'm starting to get back into the old striper fishing. So what we got, it's a good looking reel. This is one of the newer ones. You can hear it don't have the clicking sound with the drag. It's got the ball bearing anti-reverse in it like the newer ambassadors do. So far from what I've seen from the reel, I'm pretty impressed. I kind of like the way it looks. I like the feel of it. I like the big power handle. I like the easy to read screen that it has for the uh, line counter. Right here's the button to reset it. So that's in a great spot. And it's got a really loud clicker. This would be pretty good for the James River or pretty good for night fishing for flatheads, I do believe. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to set these up for striper fishing. I used to love to striper fish a lot, but kind of got out of it. But now I'm trying to get back into it. So I'm going to set these up mostly for trolling for striper. I'm going to pair that Okuma up with a big cat fever medium heavy action rod. This is the seven foot six. It's one of the original ones. I got a couple of them that I've never used before. I'm going to use these as my boat rods from a line counter. This rod here has got the ability to cast up to one to 10 ounces. So that'll be perfect for pulling umbrella rigs and things like that. It's still got plenty of tip. I mean, still got that nice flexible tip. Should be great for what I'm going to use it for. I'm going to use lead core line. I don't know if any of you has ever used lead core line, but lead core line is a way to get the line down deeper. Uh, it almost acts like a, almost like a downrigger. You can know each one of these colors, you know, it's, it's color coded. Every 10 yards, the line changes colors. So that way you can easily count how far you're putting the line down into the water. Now with a line counter, you know, I've got that to help me out a little bit, but if you didn't have a line counter, this here works perfectly. You just got to remember, each one of these is 10 yards. When it changes color, you've lowered it into water 10 yards. Uh, my memory suits me. It's somewhere around for every 10 yards you lower this in the water, your line, your bait presentation will be about four to five foot below the surface, running at about 1.8 to two miles per hour, somewhere in that general area. I mean, you can tweak with it a little bit. You know, every bait, you start using bigger baits or you're using a larger uh, leader line, of course you can raise it up. But a rule of thumb, let's just say five foot for, uh, for every 10 yards. So five foot for every color you drop into water and that's at about two miles per hour. So that makes it a pretty interesting bit of math you have to do, but once you get used to doing it, it's pretty easy. Like I say, I've been out of the striper fishing for a long time, but I'm gonna start getting back into it a little bit. I know we got a couple of lakes around here where we can catch a few striper. All right, so that's what I'm gonna be using for my lead line. I'm gonna be using 30 pound Andy as the backer. So I'll put the 30 pound Andy on this reel first. So what you have to do is you have to kind of figure out how much line you need to put on here for a backer. Using mono backer with braid is a good idea anyway. It just helps you from having to have so much braid but it also keeps the braid from spinning on the spool. Mono would grip the spool. If you uh, don't use mono, then you really need to put your knot on there and then put a little piece of tape on it to keep it from spinning until it gets good and tight and you start tightening it down. But in this, I'm gonna show you how I put the line on, which that's pretty basic, but I'll show you the knots that we use to connect the mono to the lead core and the lead core to the uh, uh, fluorocarbon. So what we'll do is we'll have mono backing. We'll put 50 yards of this uh, lead core over the top of the mono, and then we'll put fluorocarbon as a leader. So essentially when it's all said and done, you'll have 30 pound Andy. You'll have 20, I think this is 27 pound. Yeah, 27 pound lead core line. And then we'll have 17 pound fluorocarbon. The fluorocarbon is nothing more than a leader at the end of this. I'll probably put 30, 40 feet of the fluorocarbon at the very back end of it. Sounds complicated, but it makes it work out real nice because that way the lead core gets you down to the bottom. The fluorocarbon is the leader smaller and it'll give you a lot of good action on your bait.
Okay, we got the reel on the rod. We got everything tightened down real good. I've got the mono ready to go on. And like we talked about in the intro, I'm going to have mono on first. This is going to be 30 pound test mono going on first. And the reason why I like to use mono, like we talked about earlier, it doesn't slip on the spool where sometimes uh, braid will. This won't. And it also keeps me from having to use so much braid. And in this case, I'm going to be using a lead core. You don't really want lead core on your entire reel. I guess you could, but I, I don't think I would want it. First of all, lead core is very expensive and it's just not a great material to work with for that, for the whole reel anyway. All right, so what we're going to do, I know how much line this reel will hold. Now I've got to calculate how much lead core I'm going to put on it. I'm going to try to put 50 yards. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put about 100 yards of, or 100 feet of mono on it. Let me go ahead and reset this thing and we'll go ahead and start turning it and filling it up. Got it set to zero. So now I just know I want to put about a hundred feet of line on here. When I fill a reel up, I like to make sure if you'll notice the line is going on the spool this way. So I want it to come off of the spool the same direction otherwise i don't want the spool to where when the line's coming on this it's actually twisting i know it really don't make a whole lot of difference because once you throw it a couple times it's going to go back to normal anyway it just helps for the reel to line up and keeps everything nice and tight on your first filling and if you'll notice the line counter is counting backwards because i'm reeling in All right, I said I was going to put about 100 feet. That should put me about perfect. Okay, we got our line, our mono on the reel. Now it's time to put the lead core. Now what makes lead core what it is, it's actually got a little tiny filament of lead. I know it's kind of hard to see, especially with that rod down there, but there's the lead. Thus it's named lead core. Now to make this uh, connection, what I'll do I'll pull the sheath back like that right there. That's about four inches, five inches, and you just break the lead. Now once you break the lead out, you go ahead and pull the sheath back. Okay, you can see we got the lead out of it, and you can tell where the lead ends. The lead ends right there. Now you gotta remember this part here, it's very important. To make this knot before you ever go any further, tie just a simple overhand knot but do not pull it tight and don't kink the line. Now me, I like to use two connections on my main connection. So what I'll do, or two knots, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make a second overhand knot. And again, don't pull these tight. So you can see what I've got here. I've got two loose knots. It's kind of hard to see, but there's my two loose knots. Now. Take this end here that you pulled the lead out of already. Take the end of your monofilament. And I'm using 30 pound. If this was a smaller line, it would be real easy to do. But I like 30 pound test line for my main line, just in case. Now, what you gotta do next is take the end of the mono. We'll try to get it out here in the light where you can see it. And feed it inside where you just took the lead out. Just like that. Then you just work the line into the lining. Like I say, it's a little tedious, especially with using this big line, but it's well worth it because this is a strong, strong connection. Okay, you can see now we've got the monofilament pushed in all the way to right there. Now here's where the overhand knots come in play. What you wanna do is you wanna feed this knot all the way to where the monofilament starts, all the way to here. You wanna get it as close to this end as you possibly can. So what you do is you just keep pulling it till you get it all the way to there, and then you just cinch that knot up right there. Like I say, you want to get it as close as you possibly can to that. 
And you can see all it is is a simple overhand knot and then you pull it as tight as you can. Now, like the Chinese finger trap, this mono is being pinched inside this. The harder the fish pulls, the tighter it's gonna get. You cannot pull that monofilament out of there. And what it does, it gives you a real small, and I mean a real small knot right there. So you won't even hardly notice it going through your line guides. And it'll go right through the real line guide easy. Now like I say, I like to put two on this first connection right here because this is your main line. And both of these are strong lines, so that way I've got a good connection between the two of them. So you see I tied that second knot. We'll go ahead and pull it up here. And you don't have to put it as close. I always try to keep it back about a half an inch or so from the original one. So here's the first one. And you don't have to worry about taking that lead out of the inside of this because the lead really is no strength. The lead provides nothing at all when it comes to strength. All the lead's in there for is for weight, not for strength at all. So there's that knot. I'm going to put this knot right here, about a half inch behind that one. And I'm going to pull it tight. Now, you can see what we've got. Got two knots, they're real small, they'll go right through the line guide with no problem. Alright, we'll go ahead and reel in the lead core onto the reel now. Alright, you can see we got the blue going on now. There you go, it just changed colors. So that was 10 yards. Twenty yards, change of colors, there's thirty yards, forty, and there we go. There was the last little bit coming on the spool, so that'll be fifty yards. Now it's time to make our final connection. And what I'm gonna use is fluorocarbon like what we talked about. It's a lot smaller diameter. It's almost invisible to the fish. That's why a lot of people like to use it. This is only 17 pounds. I'll show you how easy this connection will be. So you got your lead core. Just like what we've done before, we wanna strip it back. You see how easy that is? There's about a three inch piece, three and a half inch. I'll go just a little bit more. There we go. There we go, we got about five inches of the leg core pulled out of this. That's pretty easy. Remember what we was talking about, about making the overhand knot? I usually only do one with this. You don't really need to do two, but you can. I oh, heck with it. We'll just go ahead and do just one. All right, you take your fluorocarbon, and like I say, this being a lot smaller diameter, it shouldn't be nearly as hard to get it inside of here. Try to hold this out here where you can see it. So I got it started inside there. And like I said, this being a smaller diameter, it should feed right in. You just push it right on in there until it hits the lead. We've hit the lead right there. Make sure it's all the way down. All right, we got this fluorocarbon pushed all the way down in here. So you can see there's where the lead is and there's where my fluorocarbon is. So we've got it pushed all the way in. Then all you do is you take, just like we did before, you just slide this knot all the way to the end where the two meet and go through the same thing we done last time. Just cinch that knot down. And like I say, the closer you get it to that tag, the better. I mean, if you got a little tag sticking out, it ain't going to hurt nothing. But the closer, the better. And pull it tight. There we go. Okay, here's our completed rig. We got 45 feet of fluorocarbon. I'll probably cut off four or five feet when I put my first connection on it. Then we've got 50 yards of lead core. That way with 50 yards of lead core, going by what the normals are, that should put me where I can go down about 25 feet if I put all five colors in the water. That should get me about 25 foot of drop on my bait. 
and then behind that I've got my 30 pound monofilament so all together it's a good combination now this wouldn't be very good for trying to cast out long distances but for lowering it down and doing uh, trolling out of a boat you can't ask for a better rig I hope this helps somebody uh, I know it ain't gonna help my catfish buddies much but I hope this helps somebody uh, if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them I'll be doing some more videos on knots and different techniques so stay tuned thank you